Weighted average shows up a little more frequently on the ACT than it used to. It's on about three quarters of tasks, definitely worth knowing, and it's not too bad. Weighted average is just an average, except things that either have different weights or they happen a different number of times, which is the same thing. So when you're dealing with numbers and not percentages or fractions, I encourage you to calculate it just like you would a regular uh, average. And that's the case in our example at the bottom of the screen. So what you would do is use your traditional average relationship. By the way, if you haven't watched the video on me and looked at that stuff, definitely do that because there can be some really nasty average questions on the ACT, really nasty mean questions on the ACT. So average is sum over number, right? So we just need the sum of everything that happens. So here's where people kind of get goofed. Now, they don't realize what, what to put on top. Do you put the three on top or do you put the one on top? Well, the one is how many times this happens. There's one student, one thing. The three is the value. We're gonna talk about that after we're done with the problem a little bit more, but you're interested in the value. And in this case, in the case of weighted average, the way you find it is value times number. And let's explain that. So there is one student that spends an average of three hours a week. So that one three is counted. Now there are seven, or excuse me, nine students that spend an average of seven hours a week. So I could say um, plus seven, plus seven, plus seven, plus seven, plus seven, until, until I get to nine sevens. Or I could say nine times seven, right? Multiplication is just really repeated addition. Now, you don't actually need the parentheses there. I'm putting them there just because it makes it easier to look at. Uh, next, we have 11 and 13. And then finally, we have 13 and 7. Big old line. Now, on these problems, they're always going to give you the total number of students or whatever you're talking about. I really encourage you to find that. It's usually in the question or in the title of the, the table or graph. Um, it saves time, and a lot of times I've had people miss these because they've miscalculated the denominator. So, do, so don't do that. Uh, it's an easy mistake to make, and it's really a, a silly one to make. So just do the math up here, and you'll end up with 300 over 30. which makes our average 10 hours a week. Nice round number. So what did we do here? Well, we took the number of times something happens. We took the number of times, just put a little number there, times the value. Now, of course, it's a little invisible here because this is three times one. But we added all those number times values together, divided that by the number, and that gave us the average. That's an easy way to do a weighted average. And it works really, really well when you have this sort of frequency table going on. It kind of breaks down, though, if you don't. If you have something that's in percentages or something like that. Now, I wouldn't necessarily do these frequency ones like this, but I'm going to show you the second way to do it. So the other way you could do this is it would be value, just like we did before. And instead of multiplying it by the number, it'll be the number over the total. And then you want to multiply these together and then add them all together. And that'll be it. You don't have to divide any, any of this because you're actually already doing the division when you divide by the total. Number over total gives you the percent that each value is in the whole thing, okay? So how would this look on paper? Well, it would look like this. It'd be 1 30th times 3 plus 9 30th, which would be 3 tenths, but I don't want to reduce it, times 7 plus um, 13 30th times 11, and so on. And that's really all there is to it. Now, you're, if you like that way better, use it by all means. 
I think the, the first way is easier when you're dealing with whole, uh, the whole numbers. Um, you will see more problems like this, and we'll do another example like this in the video on frequency tables, so check that out. This is a, a more pro, uh, popular problem now because they've increased the number of problems that are based on tables. So uh, look for it.